Hey friends, today I'm reading another true story called Journey, based on the true story of O.R. Seven, the most famous wolf in the West. The author's name is Emma Bland Smith, illustrations by Robin James. So wolves were not in Oregon for a very long time, and he was the first wolf who made it to Western Oregon since 1947. And um, he and his family had radioactive collars on them, and he was born in 2009. And they were hoping to reintroduce uh, wolves into Oregon, and so they wanted to track and s them and see what happened. So in 2011, he was old enough to leave his family, and he started off on his own. And this is a story about his amazing journey. And if you want some more information, you can look online, and they even have some little video clips of him. I think it's super interesting, because you know how much I love animals. The wolf took one last look at his mother and his father. This sweet-smelling forest of pines and firs had always been home, but he was grown now and most of his brothers and sisters had already left to start their own families. It was time for him to do the same. He began to walk slowly away. If he stayed close to home in these woods that he knew so well, life would be easier. But as he peered into the distance, he felt an unexpected thrill. What was out there? What lay past the mountains? He walked faster into the unknown. Abby pulled herself onto a stool at the diner. Some ranchers at the next table were talking. Did you see that? There's a wolf headed our way. Abby and her dad read the article that ranchers were talking about. They learned after a long time ago there had been wolves all over the country. Were there really wolves here before? Abby asked her dad. Yes, he said. There were thousands of wolves here in Northern California. They continued to read the article and learned that biologists were trying to reintroduce these magnificent animals to areas where there are vast stretches of wilderness. Not too many roads and not too many farms, just right for wolves. Then about a year ago, something happened. A wolf in northern Oregon, OR7, left his pack, crossed a mountain range, and was now traveling steadily southward toward California. Oh, I hope he'll come to California, said Abby. But she guessed that would be unlikely. Now think about why ranchers and farmers might not like wolves. The wolf stepped over some fallen trees. His sharp ears heard a low click, and he turned his head toward the noise. His powerful nose caught a lingering scent of humans. His tail dropped down, and he froze. The humans weren't here now. His senses told him that, but had they, they had been not long ago. He veered away sharply and headed into the dense forest. He's so beautiful. Remember, we've talked about ecosystems, and wolves are a very important part of an ecosystem. So when you take the wolf away from the ecosystem, it's not as healthy as it was when the wolf was there. So that's why it's important to reestablish wolves where they should be. Abby froze with her spoonful of cereal halfway to her mouth. The wolf stared out from, from the television screen, the first photo of him ever. So that's what he looks like, Abby thought. The photo had been snapped by a hunter's hidden mo motion sensor camera near Butte Falls in southern Oregon just 38 miles from the California border. Dad, look, Abby said happily. She turned and grinned at her dad, but he wasn't grinning back. That poor fella better be careful, Dad said quietly. Abby's smile disappeared as her dad explained that while most people were excited to welcome back his shy visitor, others thought that the wolf would hunt their sheep or cows and it would, should be chased away or worse. Abby was so worried she could barely sleep that night. Loping along the, the ridge overlooking a giant lake, the wolf sniffed the frosty air. He smelled grouse and porcupines, deer and snowshoe hares, but no one like him, no wolves. Look at this picture and tell me, think about where that might be. Maybe you've been there. He wanted to find a female wolf and create a pack of his own with a litter of pups. If he turned around and retraced his steps all the way back home, he may have a better chance. If he kept exploring this new land, could he find a mate? He paused and picked up speed as his instincts drove him on into unfamiliar territory. Just in case you don't know, that is Crater Lake. He crossed the border and Abby could hardly believe it. For weeks now, she had been following the wolf's route on the internet. The last update said he was near Crater Lake in Oregon. Today, she'd learned that he'd finally made it into California, becoming the first wolf in the state in almost 100 years. Excitedly, she stuck a new thumbtack into the map on her wall. 
Going back to the computer, she scrolled down the screen and read comments from other readers. Many people were happy about the wolf, but others were afraid. That fear was turning into anger. That wolf better keep away from my farm or else, one comment read. Abby knew what that meant. That wolf was in danger. Was there anything she could do to help? So here is her map, and she's placing pins where the wolf is going, and this is where he started out, way up here. And he's been traveling all here completely alone. The wolf pushed on, weaving around boulders, dotting the, dotting the fields. As he traveled, the sun rose over the enormous mountain and meadows gave way to forest. Deer grazed, froze, then fled, and rabbits zigzagged wildly through the thickets. This was good land, wolf country. But where were the other wolves? Wolves live better in packs, not alone. Hunting is more difficult alone. Sleeping is more dangerous alone. The wolf had to find a companion, and soon. A contest to name the wolf, cried Ashley, Abby, sorry, listening to a local radio broadcast. A conservation group was asking children to send in their suggestions. This council would be her chance. This could be her chance to help him. She could get out her notebook. She got out her notebook and pencil. Brownie? No. Cal for California? No. Spot? No. Ori for Oregon? Mm, maybe. She thought for hours, and then it came to her. One day after he left the mountains. For the flat, dry plains, the wolf spotted an animal in the distance, racing through the sagebush. Two of them, three, a whole pack. Not quite wolves, though, coyotes. He quivered with excitement. Slightly, shyly, he introduced himself, and they ran together. Could he make a pack with these creatures? Coyotes and wolves are similar, but they're not the same for sure. Abby, called Dad. It's for you. Hello? Abby wasn't used to getting phone calls. Her confused look became a smile as she turned to her dad and said, They chose Journey. They chose my name. After that, the news spread like wildfire. Within days, the whole world seemed to know about Journey the wolf. That week, Abby's teacher taught a lesson on gray wolves. Her cousins in New York called to say they'd read about Journey in the paper. Even her grandparents far away in Mexico heard the news. Journey was famous, too famous to harm, just as the contest organizers had planned. Abby hoped he would be safe now. Back in her room, Abby studied her map. The trail of thumbtacks showed that Journey had turned around. He was still in California, but heading north, and that made Abby nervous. Would Journey stay here or head back? Now all over the world, perhaps people were watching, listening, and hoping. Journey left the coyotes. They were too different, not for him. He left the plains behind and roamed. Week after week, month after month, he spent his days exploring, always looking out for other wolves. What was that shadow? Only an eagle. What was that smell? Only a bobcat. Winter came and they then melted away and the wildflowers bloomed under the pine trees. Journey put his nose up for the spring air. If he didn't find a mate soon, he might just give up and go back north to his old pack. He let out a long howl, broadcasting his presence. To his surprise, for the first time on his long journey, for the first time in almost three years, he heard an answering howl. So he'd been wandering all by himself for three years. That's a long time. There's a girl wolf. Abby stared at the newspaper. A wildlife biologist had taken photos of Journey and another wolf smaller than him and jet black. A female. They were in Oregon, just on the other side of the California border. Journey didn't go all the way back home. He was still nearby. With a little detective work, scientists figured out that the female wolf, wolf was like Journey. She, had a, she was a long way from home, a traveler. Had Journey found what he was looking for? Did this mean he would stay? Maybe Journey's story was just beginning. Maybe wolves were here for good. Maybe one day Abby and others would actually be able to see one of Journey's descendants or hear wolves howling in the distance in the night. They're so beautiful, aren't they? 
The wolves settled near a river in an area where there was space to run, wildlife to hunt, and no humans. It was just the right place to raise a family. That summer, when the little pups stumbled out of their den, blinking in the sunlight, Journey was there beside them. Along with his mate, he caught food for them and played with them, and as they grew, he taught them how to survive here in the woods. Their home, this vast stretch of wilderness where there were not many, too many roads, not too many farms, just right for wolves. That's super exciting to think these wolves were born into the wild and they would start repopulating the area. So here's a picture of the real journey. He's really beautiful. It's pretty big. So in 2015, his radio collar battery ran out. So the only way they were able to track him after that is if, they, if he showed up on any wildlife cameras. And sadly, the last time they saw him was in the winter of 2020. Or I guess, no, he didn't show up for the winter of 2020 uh, count. And so by April of 2020, which was, it'll be a year in April, they have decided that he's probably deceased now, which means he's dead, which is super sad. But it means he lived about 11 years, which is pretty good for a wolf in the wild. And so if you want more information, it talks about him right here. And again, here's a picture of, I don't know if you can see it very well, the map where he started. So he started way up here in a place called the, I don't know how to say it, I'm not from Oregon, Wallawa Mountains. And he traveled all the way down here, went all the way down to California. And here he kind of ran around a little bit. Then he came back into Oregon and he settled in Jackson County by the Rogue River. Pretty exciting. I think this is a great book. And here it gives you a timeline of his life. Here's a picture of one of their pups. They were able to get a picture of him. And here's another one of his pups when they got a little bit bigger. And here's some more um, information about Oregon and information about wolves if you're interested. And this is a book that you can check out from the library if you ever want. It has lots of nonfiction information. I hope you enjoyed the book. I think it's super fascinating. You know how much I love animals and wildlife. All right, friends. Happy reading.